A child dies every 12 minutes in Yemen. The wars killed more than a quarter of a million people. And a UN study says that development in one of the world's poorest countries has been pushed back 20 years. So how can we stop the world's worst humanitarian disaster getting even worse? This is Inside Story. Welcome to the program. I'm Imran Khan. The fighting in Yemen, now in its fifth year, appears to be no closer to an end. Peace efforts have made little progress, and the United States and some other Western powers continue to support the Saudi UAE coalition against the Houthi rebels. Every day brings horrific stories of civilian deaths, including women and children, from violence, famine, or disease. The UN says Yemen is one of the greatest preventable disasters. A UN study identifies 44 million Yemenis, nearly 40% of the population, as living in extreme poverty. 1.6 million children are facing malnutrition. More than a third of them of school age cannot attend classes. The war has cost the economy $89 billion. Let's bring in our guests from Yemen, Hakim Al Masmari, a political analyst and editor in chief of the Yemen Post in London, Mohamed Jume, member of the National Dialogue Conference in Yemen, and from Amman, Carl Shembri, regional media advisor in the Middle East for the Norwegian Refugee Council. Thank you all for joining us. Let me begin with you, Hakim Al Masmari, in Sana'a. Not only have you been covering this conflict, but you're a resident of Yemen. Uh, for the last five years, this has been a worsening conflict, to the point now where the UN are calling it the world's worst humanitarian uh, disaster. What's it been like for you? Um, it's unbelievable. Uh, it's sad when you see the family suffering, uh, and it's not just one family or our neighbors. It's an entire nation of 30 million people, whether in the north or in the south. Uh, so it's not only those who are uh, living in Houthi-run areas. Uh, the suffering is nationwide. And this war has killed so many uh, civilians, has, um, has made so many children turn into uh, being child soldiers, have made so many begging uh, being spread by the millions, families, uh, tens of millions sleeping hungry. It's unbearable. And uh, the problem is that this, this, this suffering has it's been like this for the last few years, and the UN has always been saying that it's the worst humanitarian crisis. But every time, this never it still continues, and the, uh, the, the problems are barely solved. That's mainly because of the obstacles that are happening uh, uh, by both sides or due to the war. But again, um, this war needs to come to an end to help not the, uh, the sides who are clashing, but the innocent civilians who are in the millions who are paying the price of this dirty, long war. Hakim, there seems to be an anger to your voice there. Do you see any resolution to this conflict? I'm a bit optimistic, to be honest, not by the UN efforts, but uh, there are mediation efforts happening right now. There are um, uh, calls for a direct talk between the Saudis and the Houthis. In this way, they can um, end this, uh, this war easier. The Houthis are willing to give in to some of the Saudi demands uh, to evacuate their territory. So, uh, the, 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 Territories on, on the Saudi border, etc. So there are, there is hope, but again, uh, there are also sides who are making obstacles to end this war, and this is why uh, um, it's very sad that there are still some people who are seeing the suffering that's happening in Yemen, while at the same time um, uh, not trying to end it. So there is hope. Uh, hopefully, by um, uh, by the end of this year, we, we are very optimistic that. Uh, the tactics of mediations, of talks, of peace talks will come to a change. The UN has basically um, uh, fell on its knees. Uh, four months, they could not implement uh, um, the Hodeida ceasefire, ceasefire agreement. So um, uh, there will be a change in twist in ways to um, change the way that these peace talks are happening. And I'm pretty sure that, that that next step will be optimistic, especially if it gives the Saudis and the um, the Houthis uh, a direct channel of communication to end this war easier rather than through, through mediations, um, UN mediation. Mohamed Jume in London, uh, you're very uh, knowledgeable about the Saudi role in all of this. Now, the Saudis, when they first started this war five years ago, were they expecting it to last this long? And what is their end game? Why is the Saudi-led coalition still in this war? 
Well, I think uh, the war in Yemen, uh, if we want to say, started in 2004, before uh, the actual uh, recent war started in 2014. Uh, the Houthis uh, started the war in 2004 against the former um, uh, regime, the last regime, uh, former president's regime, and it now continues. Uh, the, the, the Saudis, the Emiratis, other parties uh, are now involved because of the, the, there was an inside war, like a sort of civil war inside the country before many years, so many years before the Saudis and Emiratis and others uh, getting involved uh, into this war. So I think without looking at the main reasons inside the country for this war, we are just uh, uh, hoping for um, having peace as uh, a sort of dreams because we are not uh, negotiating, we are not uh, discussing the real reasons of the war which is mainly uh, inside the country and uh, there is like a civil uh, conflict inside the uh, Yemen and uh, the Houthis have this sort of ideology and religious thought that they are they have the rights to rule the country without um, uh, getting it by the right way by elections they didn't they don't think about elections at all and without it, um, having the Houthis coming to a negotiating table with a very clear willing that they are going to implement these uh, agreements they signed with the government, then um, there is no hope. For example, they went to uh, Stockholm uh, four, or four months ago, more than four months ago, and last week or the week before, Mohammed al Houthi said, we are not going to withdraw our troops. We are not going to withdraw from Hudayda. And the uh, uh, UN envoy to Yemen mentioned last week that there is no negotiation, political negotiation, before uh, implementing and achieving the uh, Stockholm Agreement. The government says the same thing as well. So I don't look at the issue as a war from outside on Yemen. Yes, it's some aspect. In some aspects, there is a war from outside, um, uh, and there is a war which is first inside the country and which caused the, the, the outside war, the regional war. I think the main reason is inside. The main um, cause for this war is between the Yemenis and without the Yemenis getting together to negotiate their uh, differences into the country inside uh, in a, a real political uh, process, then uh, I think the other parties from outside, from the regional um, aspect, international aspect, will, get, will still get involved in this war. But, Mohammed, many would disagree with you. They would say that the reason this war has gone on so long is because it is a proxy war between Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and Iran, and that the, those three players have backed different sides in this war, and it's just continued on. Surely, it's not about what's going on inside Yemen. It's actually the regional implications are, as you say, the real reason for this war. I think... Uh, myself, the uh, war started, even the actual war, which started in 2014, started six months before the Saudis and the Emiratis getting involved in this war. So uh, what I'm saying, I'm not denying that there is a, a regional aspect of this war, but what I'm saying is the real reason is inside the country because the civil war inside the country started when the Houthis attacked Sana'a in 2014, getting the president to be ex um, exiled in, in, in Riyadh and even using the um, aircrafts against the presidential palace in Aden when he left Sana'a to Aden. So there is a real problem in, inside the country. We need to discuss this problem. We need to um, find solution to this um, uh, problem inside the country. And then we can say, say to the other parties outside the country, whether regional or international, stop this war. But I think looking at the war as a war between Yemen and Saudis or Yemen and Emiratis is just getting, a, um, getting like a vague image about this war. The war has some aspects inside the country, outside the country, regional, international. That's what I'm saying. And yes, Iranians are there, Saudis are there, Emiratis are there. You can look at the war as sort of proxy, proxy war, yes, but it is still a civil war inside the country and without it coming to an agreement between the legitimate president, the legitimate government, and the Houthis, who are uh, considered until this moment as a coup 
they are committing a coup crime in the country without getting any sort of agreement between the Houthis and the legitimate government, then there is no hope of having any peace agreement in the country. Let me bring in Aman here and Carl Shembri from the Norwegian Refugee Council. You were in uh, Yemen in February. The report, and I've read the report, makes for damning reading. Uh, the essence of the report suggests that Yemen has actually gone backwards. It's de-developed. What have you seen on the ground? Yeah, I guess one important point that the report makes, which is quite a no-brainer, really, that the, the longer the war goes on, the more... Uh, backwards, Yemen will be will be uh, forced uh, in, in in years. Uh, they they quantify the exact years and and also the billions of dollars uh, that that uh, are, are uh, will be required to to rebuild Yemen. So that that's that's a, a very important point, which is quantified uh, for the first time. Shocking figures, as you said, we always get shocking figures from Yemen. Uh, they they have always been shocking, and they get more shocking every time that a new figure comes out. What I've seen on the ground pretty much reflects that. I've seen uh, this was ultimately the, is the, the, the poorest country in the region thrown into even further abject poverty. I've, I've met uh, people queuing in, in our food distribution lines who until a few months ago had their own businesses that have been destroyed. More people dependent on aid. Now they are 24 million. Yemenis in need of aid uh, over there. People displaced over and over again. They flee to uh, an area which they would hope is safe, leaving everything behind, losing their houses, all their, their possessions, and then forced to flee again because the fighting reaches them. The fighting has reached even displacement camps, camps where people, civilians, have fled from the fighting. They were under attack. People have been killed in displacement camps. Children out of school, children who are forced to work uh, to help their families, children who are attacked in schools. Until a few days ago, we saw the latest uh, despicable attack on a school where, where children were killed in their classrooms. Um, people who have lost their jobs, people who have been Paid, haven't been paid their salaries in the public sector for years now. Uh, we're talking about teachers, doctors, professionals uh, who still go on with their jobs uh, and thankfully that they do because the, most of them are, are, are doing that on a mission. It's a mission uh, for their own country. But they are themselves now struggling to even have a meal a day uh, and, and uh, struggling to, to put some food on the table. Uh, I've met um, uh, uh, the father of, of four daughters, in, uh, of si actually six daughters, four of whom were killed in Hodeida uh, only last November uh, in, a, in an attack on his house. And he is absolutely she's still shell-shocked. He can't understand why the, the, the daughters of a teacher like him uh, would come under attack. Why would, why would his house come, uh, come under attack? And my, our, our Carl, job talking, is, is with, talking with ordinary of, civilians. Talking of children, we've been on air just over 12 minutes now. According to the UN, another child has died in Yemen in the period that we have been speaking. I want to bring in Hakim al-Masmari here again. The figures are there. Everything is shocking. But our guest in London, Mohamed Jume, says this is an internal conflict, uh, that this is a civil war that needs to be sorted out between the two parties. It's not a proxy war, though the regional elements are there, Saudi Arabia, the UAE and uh, Iran. However, it's up to the Yemenis to sort this out themselves. Do you agree with that? You can't deny it. I completely agree with what my friend Mohamed Jume said, um, on that the internal parties um, need to get together and solve this problem as well from the roots. He makes a lot of sense. And this is what's missing in many of the, um, the analysis that's coming out of Yemen. Yes, there's uh, international intervention, uh, regional intervention, there's a proxy war, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But this point is very important that these sides need to meet, need to get together, need to uh, try to solve this, uh, this problem from the roots. And sadly, over the last five years, this has really happened. And this is one of the main reasons why this war has been continuing for so long. It's easier for Yemenis to, uh, to, to get together and solve their own problems under the uh, UN international or regional umbre umbrella, GCC, uh, whatsoever. But the, uh, these sides need to meet together. And this is, uh, I, I think, w will be or should be the next step. And I'm pretty optimistic that it will be the next step, that uh, these sides will finally get the chance to meet uh, and try to solve these, um, uh, our problems internally. Uh, again, uh, it's not, not who wins, who loses. Uh, Yemen loses if they don't reach a deal. Each side needs to uh, give in to certain demands, needs to compromise if they really care about Yemen. 
this is where nah. you really show that uh, they care about Yemen or not. Is are they willing to give in to, for the sake of Yemen or not? Mohammed Jume in London. Um, is that possible? Can there be a complete ceasefire and the, all of the Yemeni sides come together and talk, or is that too far gone now? Well, um, uh, unfortunately, I'm not optimistic as my friend in, in Sana'a to say that by the end of this year, um, there will be an end to uh, uh, this war. Uh, first of all, uh, the two parties went to Stockholm to sign an agreement and this agreement um, says that uh, the government troops should be withdrawn from the borders of the city of Hodeida and the Houthis uh, should uh, withdraw their troops from the inside uh, Hodeida and from uh, the, the port of the city. Until this moment, um, the withdrawal hasn't happened. And as I said, the Houthis last um, few days mentioned that they are not going to um, withdraw from the city or from the post or from any other part of the whole province of Hodeida. Uh, the United Nations envoy said uh, there is no political process or political negotiation until the Stockholm Agreement is being implemented, which is not uh, until this moment implemented. So I think without uh, two parties inside Yemen, uh, um, regardless the Saudis and Emiratis and the Iranians and even the Western countries, without the Yemenis themselves come to uh, an idea that they cannot defeat each other. I, I mean, they, 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 there is no winning, no losers in the country. And, uh, and they have to find a way to keep, to restore their country, their legitimacy. We have uh, a clear way. And we have uh, three references for the uh, political solution in Yemen, the national dialogue outcomes, and before that, the GCC's initiative, and we have the uh, UN resolutions uh, concerning Yemen. So uh, the, 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 the references are there. It is easy to get the um, political uh, solution, but it is difficult because there is no willingness within the Yemenis themselves to implement and to um, comply with the, with the agreement. If they sign the agreement in Stockholm, and now we have about five months without uh, implementing the agreement, then um, Hawaii and the envoy uh, to Yemen, Martin Griffith, um, uh, is uh, saying, um, like in every uh, remarks of him to the United Nations, that we are getting better, we are um, getting more involved, and the parties are getting more involved, uh, women are getting more involved, children and youth are getting more involved in the political solutions. I think this is not the way uh, to talk to the United Nations, un unless Martin Griffith says clearly to the United Nations that there is some uh, parties in Yemen who are making obstacles, who are making it difficult to implement the Stockholm Agreement, then there is no way. I know that he is trying to use political language. He is not uh, trying to name who is making difficulties uh, on the political way, but I think he should come to a point that he has to mention and he has to be very clear and very frank to Mohammed, name Mohammed, who you is seem to be in Yemen saying, Mohammed, making what difficulties. You, what you seem to be to, saying is that the UN is almost to blame here because they're not using the right kind of language. Carl, um, let me just bring you in here. You deal with the UN, you deal with various Yemenis, both inside and outside of Yemen, outside of Yemen on all the sides. Is the UN role here a problem? Uh, th I think that would, that would be uh, missing the wood for the trees because ultimately it is the, the two warring parties and their sponsors who need to agree. And, and the UN can only facilitate and, and remind them uh, of, of the, the laws of war which, which they, they need to adhere to. Um, what, what I would, uh, I think, uh, in a bit of um, divergence from, from the, the, the other uh, colleagues um, on the panel, what I would say is I, we can never underestimate the, the outside influence uh, of the US, of, of uh, uh, the UK, France um, on, on this conflict, and of course Iran on the other side. Uh, we've only just seen a few days ago the, the uh, President Trump's uh, veto to uh, the US Congress's um, resolution trying to stop the, the war support in Yemen to the Saudi-led coalition. That was vetoed. That is not going to help in any way in boosting confidence on the ground. It's only going to create more suffering and more death. Uh, the, I think where 
my I think the per pertinent point to be made here is that the top uh, donors of Yemen's humanitarian response, that is the US, Saudi Arabia, the Emirates and the UK, uh, among others, are also the top culprits of the, among the top culprits of, of where Yemen is right now. Uh, they are feeding Yemenis with one hand and uh, destroying their country with the other. And uh, this is a duplicitous game which is, which is, uh, which is their fault. It is their decision. Uh, they are, they are uh, promoting this um, together with obviously uh, the other side, Iran, in, in supporting Ansar Allah, known as the Houthis. Uh, this can be stopped. This is entirely man-made. It cannot be stopped by the UN and it cannot be stopped by uh, humanitarian agencies. We, are, we can only be there to try and save lives, but ultimately there has to be a political negotiation, a settlement that is, that is uh, uh, good for, for all parties and that will spare the millions of civilians that we are seeing either dying by, by bombs and their strikes or dying a slow and painful death, being uh, uh, hungry, sleeping hungry at night. Carl, thank you very much for that. We are running out of time, but I do want to come to my guests in Sanaa and in London uh, very quickly because we are running out of time. I want to ask you both the same question. Firstly, uh, Carl Shembri there saying uh, the US, the UK, uh, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates are playing a duplicitous game. On the one hand, they are helping the Yemenis. On the other hand, they're bombing the Yemenis. And that's the real problem. Hakim? Yeah, you can't deny that. Um, yeah, he's, he, he makes a lot of sense, and that is true. Yes, that veto by Trump uh, complicates matters, but I was also told by uh, Washington that uh, the U.S. is pushing very much, including London and the EU, to end this war uh, this year. So, um, yes, there's a lot of uh, pessimism uh, right now in the air, but uh, th there is optimism that this should go forward and, and will succeed. Um, and... Uh, Again, um, what I said while I was in Sweden during the peace talks, in Yemen, if you want to be loved by the people, it's not who wins, who loses, it's who gives in for the Yemeni people, who shows the Yemeni people that he gives or cares more or enough to try to compromise or give in to certain demands for the sake of the millions of people who are suffering. It's not who, uh, who, who is more aggressive. So uh, the tension right now in the in, in the area is because of this, and I do agree with you with your guests in London and uh, third guest that the UN uh, sh should be. Um, taking uh, I'm really sorry, Hakim. We are running stand. out of time, and I do want to bring in Mohammed Jamey in London. Here, is it a duplicitous game? On the one hand, the West, Saudi Arabia, the UAE are bombing Yemen. On the other hand, they're helping them. Well, we could ask another question. What's, wh why they are doing that? If this is the case, what is the benefit for these countries to do that? I think uh, uh, these countries, um, we cannot deny, uh, you know, there is, a, there is a war. There are ca casualties, there are destruction, there is destruction in the country. There is no one can deny this. Children, civilians are killed. Uh, schools, uh, hospitals, um, so many civil um, um, uh, buildings in Yemen are destroyed. But again, we are asking, how can we come to an agreement to solve this problem? How can we go to negotiation? There is no one talking about the inside conflict, the inside aspect of the conflict. There is no one talking about uh, the Houthis and their war against the Yemenis, against the regimes, different regimes, different governments since 2004 until now. No one discussing that because they are looking to the war as a war on Yemen, not a war inside Yemen. Thank, Thank you, you very much uh, for all your perspectives. Thanks to all our guests, Hakim al Masmari. Mohamed Jume and Carl Shembri. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Imran Khan, and the whole team here. Bye for now.